What's up, everybody? Welcome to Come On Get the Hour once again. Um, the, uh, 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 the, the, the category this week was one favorite toy. Mine was the Even Evil Stunt Cycle, which is right there. It's badass. We're going to fly that in later. But um, I used to terrorize my mom's house. I, I had a little van with a ramp, and I would rev it up and jump and break my shit. And I remember one time I went over to my grandmother's house, and she had the, the plastic on her carpet sketch. I'm talking about mm-hmm, mm-hmm. the plastic. The plastic, the plastic runway. The cow. <laughs> yeah, she had the plastic runway. Like, don't step your dirty ass feet on my shag carpet. Mm-hmm. I revved it up, and she left me alone for like an hour. And I would rev that thing, and, zow, bow, bing, bing, bing. and it. She came back like an hour later. There was like 112 black marks all the way down the cut. <laughs> so, <laughs> good times. Uh, all right, should we kick it with the first guest? Uh, yeah, who, who do we have on the lineup tonight? You want to know who's on the lineup tonight? I would like to know who's coming into uh, the into the double wide tonight. We got comedy for one double wide tonight. I'm sure, pretty <laughs> sure the cops are going to come before this hour is over. We got Lana Turner, good friend of mine, funny lady. She's got a movie out she uh, directed and produced called Let's Eat and Ralphie and 900 other milk projects. And my man, Suli McCullough, who's got this many credits. So That's any from uh, Jack Show, Tonight Show, BET Awards, on and on. And he was good buddies with Gary Chandling, the genius. Oh. And I want to get into that tonight. And uh, Suli was also one of the first comic, my first TV appearance, the last numbers, <laughs> was uh, Friday Night Videos. There used to be something called Videos Kids. But uh, it was on uh, NBC right after the Tonight Show. And we're going to talk about that because Suli was like the king of Friday Goes. I knew who he was way before I even met him. So anyway, let's kick it up. She's a good friend of mine. She said she's almost as busy as I am. She's got 900 projects going on. Uh, I went to see one of her big projects. It's in all the film festivals right now. What's Eating Ralphie Mae. I highly, highly recommend it. Uh, on top of that, as the, if that wasn't enough, you know, which, by the way, I think is produced by uh, Dr. Drew Pinsky. Um, so, yeah, we're going to talk about that. She has a one hour special on Ralphie uh, coming up. Ralphie was her was her husband. Good buddy of mine also. But she's got a zillion projects of her own. She has a pilot in production and she's also a kick ass musician. She has an album that's not even a comedy album. That's how talented she is. Give it up for the lovely Miss. Lana Turner. Hi, Hi Stevie. Hi, Lana Turner. Okay. I gave you the oh. best intro. Did you hear that wonderful intro I gave you? No, I didn't hear it. <laughs> it you was like 20 it. minutes. That's why we're late because I'm <laughs> doing tw- a 20 minute intro. I'm sorry. We had some technical uh, difficulties in the double wide. I, uh, I illegally steal some electricity from a neighbor and uh, <laughs> this is it's so hard right like we're not equipped to being able to like deal with this stuff it just has you've had to figure it out right i had to figure it out during zoom they said if if during the quarantine if you don't learn a new skill it's not for the lack of time it's for the lack of hustle so i thought i knew how to do one thing a zoom thingy 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 but apparently i don't so yeah no (laughs) it it, it's really hard (laughs) yeah (laughs) You don't have to, I, I guess if you're like, have enough time on your hands, even learning this is complicated. <laughs> I keep ordering equipment and it's still like in the closet. I'm like, I've got interface for the audio and I've got this and that. And, and ha- I'm like, I can barely turn on the camera. So let's just work on the camera work first. <laughs> well, you look great. It's so good Thank to you. see you. Same to you. I saw yeah. you at the, uh, the LA premiere. Of what, what's eating Ralphie May? Yeah, that was the... Cool. I'm so good. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, I, it kind of, this whole year was supposed to be sc- like festivals and screenings. So yeah, but I'm glad you got to attend that one because there hasn't been very many, um, but it's a pretty powerful film. It is. And um, how did you get involved with Dr. Drew? Because Dr. Drew also helped me out a couple of years ago. Um, so he was such a good dude. And I saw he was involved and you're my friend. And um so of course I, I was going to go. Of course, you know Ralphie was my friend, but but you tell me like you weren't even supposed to be in the film. 
No, I, I mean, I figured I'd be in the film in a very, a very light way because the, it was supposed to be a documentary for Ralphie to lose weight. Um, and obviously that didn't happen. So I ended up, it ended up being a lot about me, which, you know, that you can't control the course of a documentary. I always say a good documentary doesn't end where you think it is going to, right? Yeah. So yeah. that definitely didn't end where I wanted it to end. Um, yeah. and, so, and it didn't expect it to be about me. But there you go. And Drew is just, I mean, he's such a good champion for comedy and yeah. loves comics so much. So I had been on his podcast a couple times and he's just, he loves the film and wanted to be involved. And I mean, he's Dr. Drew. So yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> were you on there talking about the project? Because I remember you were, you were trying to raise money and I knew I had some footage of myself and Ralphie and I was trying to find the footage of me interviewing him and I only found like bits and pieces and Aww. but you put it out there you were trying to find footage uh, a couple of years ago right so the the doc so there's two things I just finished um what we did the crowdfunding for so um what you're talking about is from the same hard drives that we shot the documentary there's also a yeah. one hour special because there was tons of footage of Ralphie yeah. and it's all really rough rugged footage because it was never intended to be a special which makes it really special because it's like as if you're walking around you know in this one little camera capturing all these great moments of him doing stand-up that was never recorded properly in the first place so it's just all these gems woven together into um this secondary project so there's the documentary and then there's the one hour special i didn't feel right doing the crowdfunding for the documentary because it's not a story that people would expect, but a one hour special of Ralphie being hilarious absolutely is something that I think his fans were really excited to get behind. And I, I, I just, I, these things take so much time. I oh, had yeah. no idea. Like every project that you start, you're like, this is going to be great. And then like two years later, you're like, oh my God, when is this going to be over? And then, what is wrong with me for starting this project? <laughs> I had no idea how hard it was going to be. It's, it's a lot of heavy lifting to get anything done, especially something as, you know, I mean, hundreds of hours of footage, and just, you know, I mean, it was nine months of footage that had to be gone through and edited and then sound color, all the stabilization, all these different things that had to happen. And it's expensive and it's time consuming, but we're pretty much to the end of that road. So, wow, you're going to have a screening? I better get an invitation. For the one hour special? You know, yeah. I don't know. I hadn't really. I hadn't, yeah, please do. Really... Have a party. Come on. I'll wear a mask. I... I mean, I, yeah. <laughs> I I think under normal times, I absolutely would have like a big release party, probably. I know. You know, like, I don't know. I, it's Having to drive in theater. That's a really good idea. That Maybe would we should be do great. It. Do it. Okay. All right. I'm. You know, I would. I'll definitely look into. It. I think that's a great idea. All so. right. I'll help you. I'll help you push it a little bit. Yay. Okay. I'll All bring them right. a hot rod, friends, and we'll park in the front. <laughs> and the hot rods. And that'd be awesome. But I um, would love that. Let's do it. That'd be cool. Have you done one of the, the drive-in comedy shows yet? I haven't, but I just did my first in-person show about a week ago, and it felt so good to get back on stage. I mean, it was, did it you, was like did therapy. You, did you write much during the quarantine? Yeah. Yeah, you I did? wrote a lot. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I've been doing like, I've been posting content on YouTube. So I started something like my pandemic playlist. I tried to oh, yeah. post a video every couple months, something that was well put together. And yeah. uh, I have another video that I just finished. So I need to add it to that collection. And so I've been writing and just trying, you know, we're all, we have to stay busy. I actually feel like I've been really busy between those other projects that I just mentioned, yeah. as well as um, before the pandemic, I shot a pilot with five women on a tour bus. So that's been another project to get edited and just, you know, it hasn't been so, and then I'm following in your footsteps, Stevie, because I've been writing a book. So speaking of like, why would you start it? You're like, yeah, I'll just write a book, and then, you know, a year later, you're like, ah, <laughs> how do am I, I gonna get through this? Stuff? I gotta edit and rewrite, and then you think of some other shit, and then you, you're like, why did I start this? But your but book it's is an amazing so cool. I can tell you, like, from someone that can barely read a book to have written a book. Is, and I've wrote another. I've written another book now that was supposed to be out like a month ago. Oh, but, cool! But just like you said, with comedy shows, there's no book festivals, so it's just on the shelf. And now I feel guilty, like, oh, I guess I should be writing about the quarantine. But I thought it was done, and I already paid like an editor to go through and, you know, and, and cross the T's and dot the I's, and so it's just like, does, does it ever end? 
I'll have to pick your brain a little bit because this is all new for me. But like, like you said, at the festival, we you know, I had that Q and A, and we did those a few times, and yeah. there were so many questions that I felt like the film alone wasn't going to answer people's questions. So then I, like you said, I sat down. It's been over a year since I started typing, and I am editing and re-editing, and yeah, it's a lot of work. But I'm really proud to have gotten this far because, like you, I mean, I never thought I'd write a book or anything. Yeah. <laughs> like, that's just yeah, yeah. crazy. So. Yeah. It's some, there's always something that's like, a, I think, you know, divine sign or whatever that, that pushes you to do that and to challenge yourself. And we're well, creative yeah. and you're, you're producing these projects, you're, you know, you're, you're doing comedy, you're doing albums, you're doing your music, but, but to go in another direction and still be creatively driven to do that. You know, that I'm telling you, when you get to the finish line, you're going to be like, I did that. I did that. <laughs> What's next? <laughs> yeah. But then you won't stop. You'll be like, yeah, what's the next challenge? So you can't stop. Yeah. So what's your, you have a new album that's not a comedy album? Well, I just started. So the same thing with quarantine and thinking about what we're doing right now with our, you know, so I've, I, I started out as a songwriter. I didn't just write comedy songs. I just love making people laugh. But yeah. I have a lot of songs that aren't comedy. And um, I actually started, when you watched the film at the very end, when, when they roll credits, um, the director, I didn't contribute to the editing of that film, the documentary. I couldn't because as a subject, yeah, I, yeah. I, I absolutely had to step out of it. And because the director was so involved in the film and she witnessed everything, I trusted her very much to tell a very honest story. And I could say this, and, and very fair to both sides. But at the very end of the film, she needed some music to run credits over. And I had a song that I wrote about Ralphie. And we recorded it and put it on the on the end of the film. And that kind of spawned the idea of, well, I have all these other songs that I wrote. And so I've just recently started recording those as well. And uh, it I remember feels, that. It feels I remember a little song scary. At the end, and I'm like, I think that's Lana. So yeah. I, I sat there and I was with Jason Strauss and, and you know, his wife, Lanny. And we mm -hmm. watched the credits. And I'm like, oh, what a, what a beautiful song. And, it wasn't even funny or nasty or. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't a single but still like, good. curse word in there. <laughs> I know. Imagine it was that. Still good. <laughs> That's hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> Which, by the way, I wanted to show one of your uh, your comedy album covers. Like, if these lips could talk, I have it somewhere. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. That was kind of a a brave. That moment. was a brave. <laughs> wow. wow. Yeah. Do you want to know the best uh, boner killer about that picture, though? What's that? Is that I was probably three to four months <laughs> pregnant with my son. You're ripped. What are you talking about? You have like I, a, at, least a, at least a four pack in that picture. Yeah, but you know what? Like the great thing about that is that I couldn't, you know, the beginning of your pregnancy or in that pregnancy, I couldn't eat. So I was like, you know, barfing a little bit there. So, you know, morning sickness. So I was like thin. And then yeah. my boots were a little big because I was getting pregnant, you know? So okay. it was All like right. the perfect time. All right, a little bit of a buzzkill, but okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I love that picture because it's like, I, women seem to really like it. Like when I released when I re released the album, I was nervous because I, I always want to appeal not, like I don't want to be like sexual or whatever. I just want to have like, and a lot of women were like, that's funny and strong. And so it that's is. Like, it is. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Like I and feel I'm like, like you can sexualize yourself as a, as a female when it's funny. And I always have tried to like dance that line without going yeah, too far exactly. over. Because sometimes yeah. people cross that line and you're like, oh, it's not, it's not funny. <laughs> it's just, but oh, that's hot, but not. Well, you know. I was such a douche when I started because I was like, oh, lifting weights and I wear a vest and work boots. And J Johnny Sanchez is still one of my best comedy buddies today. 20 years ago, we're at the comedy store in Belly Room and I went up before him. I'd never met him. And he went up and he did five minutes ripping on me and like, hey, shouldn't you be doing push-ups? What are you doing fun? Go blow dry your hair and do some but I'm like, yeah, I like this guy, man. We're still buddies to this day. But as the, the manager in improv once told me, hey, muscles aren't funny. So don't like don't be too fit because I think people come to laugh at your at your misery. You know, if you're if you're if you're pretty or you know, like you're a pretty girl, whatever, you gotta kind of you got to downplay it a little bit. You can't go up there and, and work it too much. Yeah, I you know, I think it comes down to if like when you walk on stage, people kind of like sniff each other out. So like yeah. you're not the dude that comes in and takes 
another dude's girl from him. No, and I'm not the girl that comes in and I don't want to steal your man. So yeah. like, I feel like I can walk on stage and look good and I can be your girlfriend. Like I can be cool with you and you're going to like me because even if I look good on stage, because I, I just, I'm your friend. I'm not yeah. going to ever, but, but I think when a woman steps on stage and she has that air of, I could steal your man. Then all of a sudden it's like the women fold their arms and they like yeah. get tighter to their boyfriends and they don't want to laugh for that girl. And then the guy doesn't want to laugh because, you know, oh, be in oh, trouble. Oh, no. like, yeah. it wasn't really <laughs> funny. I was just being polite. Yeah. yeah. But for you, I think a lot of people, when you get on stage, it's like, holy shit, that guy's in shape. Like, so no, I mean, I the guys want to be you, you know? No, not like I used to be, but now I just try to go up and I just want to have fun with everybody. I don't, I don't, yeah political jokes i just want like everybody to have fun and escape and you know, like i got the best compliment one of the last i think the last show before the quarantine and it was from an actor and um and i recognized him of course and after the show he goes hey man i just feel like you're a guy i want to have a drink with that dude i want to you know like thank you man that's my old that's the i want to try to create that vibe or we're all just having fun and being silly you know Don't take yourself too seriously yeah well you're the type of dude that people want to hang out with <laughs> well, thank you there, Miss. You can't see this now, but we're going to fly this in. It's you and Dr. Drew. Oh. I talk about Dr. Drew in my uh, my book, and I didn't send him the chapter for his approval. But at your screening, I said, Dr. Drew, by the way, because I was on his podcast also. And I said, uh, just to let you know, you know, I talk about you in the new book. And he's like, all right. I was like, you cool? He's like, yeah. <laughs> all right. Okay. <laughs> he's like the sweetest, most genuine person, like, if I send him, first of all, I mean, I listened to him in high school and like love lines, like I was a fan back then. So when I send him an email and then he like immediately gets back, I'm just beside myself because I'm like, yeah. oh my God, it's Dr. Drew. It's so cool to see that in your email. Yeah, no, I know. And and he really, really cares about people, like legitimately cares. And it's, I, I just, he's a really, really good person. I've had the best experience with him. And so are you. And I hope it's going well with the Zooms, with the kids. And um, and you're a funny, funny lady. Can't wait to hear your new album. Yeah, think about that, the, the, the drive-in thing for the premiere. That'd be super cool. I think that's a really, I actually, you made me think of something else because I know that that they've been doing a couple of, well, I love flappers so much and I read, I saw the online that they're doing some movies, so maybe. I just have to wait and find out what the distribution on this stuff is going to be and then, which yeah. I've never had to do before. Again, yeah. like learning new stuff during this time. I've just like, so, but I love that. I think that's a brilliant suggestion. I would love to do that. That'd be really yeah, fun. If you need any uh, advice on the book, not that I can give you any advice, but no, I I'm would love that, Stevie. All right. I would, that's awesome. Yeah, totally. Thank you. But thank you, Miss Lana Turner, one of the funniest ladies in the comedy business. I said funny, so we have to drink. Pretend like you have a drink there. Oh, I have a drink. It's water, though, because I have kids. So this is like my I do, but they're it's... on their own. They've been on their own for like three years. My kids are raising me. Here's my, no, it's well, like six something. I've got to go like make dinner and put them to bed. So <laughs> yeah. this is my drink. Mm. All right. Mm. Should have Lana Turner, though. everybody. <laughs> Yay, thanks, Stevie. Thank you. So much fun. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right, y'all. One of the coolest guys and funniest guys. This guy, I, I've, I've been a fan of his since I saw him on the Friday night videos back in the day. He would just light up the room. That was my first and probably last TV appearance, I can't remember. Maybe I did a couple of public access things since then. But this guy's super duper busy. He's a writer, producer, director. You know him as Mouse on the Jamie Foxx show, uh, writer for The Night Show, BET Awards. I wanna to talk to him about his, uh, uh, his buddy, Gary Shanling and Diane Laughing, and uh, a good friend of mine. I'm proud to call him my friend. Let's give it up for Suli McCullough. What up, what up, what up? What's up, buddy? What's going on? I'm good, man. How are you? I'm good, buddy. I'm always thinking of you, man. I see Porsches. I send you pictures all the time, videos. Man, I love that. I love I'm that. I'm still looking for your car, man. I know. You know, it's funny. I saw, uh, remember when they were there was those floods in Houston? Yes. I saw a silver Porsche that looked just like mine that was in the flood. Yeah. And I was like, man, if that's my car... That's what you get for stealing it. Son of a bitch. <laughs> That's karma, you son of a bitch. Yeah, exactly. Because <laughs> that car don't float. 
<laughs> Damn it. But it looked exactly like my car, dude. Same silver, same era. Car. Like, there was so much water, though, I couldn't see the license plate. If I saw the license plate You're and like, it was a, uh, yeah, I was trying, dude. I was like, I might fly down to Houston <laughs> or swim, one of the two. <laughs> I'm still mad about that because when I was a kid, I had a bike. I was poor, but I would, had, a, I had a paper route. Uh -huh. so every week I would save, you know, make like, you know, $19 a week. I don't know, but yeah. I'd buy some pedals. Yeah. And then yeah. the next week I'd buy some grips. And, yeah. it was like my, and so I'm sure you've seen Citizen Kane. I'm like, that was my rosebud, bro. Yes, my, yes. My bike. And someone like stole my bike. Your bike to Citizen yes. Kane. Yes. That was like real, real, keeping it real. But then you went highbrow with it. I like that. So it took me like a year and a half to build my bike. Yes. And then these punks stole my bike. I came out one day and I'm like, where's my bike? So to yeah. this day, if I find out, I'm still going to kick them in the nuts. If I Please do. Please do. So, and every time you know I what's see crazy? It, like when you're, you know, I mean, that was like the first like car that was like my baby that got yes. stolen. And I had parked it, you know, at the time I was coaching my son's basketball team. Yeah. So uh, I had basketballs in, in the car yeah. and when it, like I parked it that night knowing I got to get up early and I went outside and you know where you park your car and yeah. it was gone. It was gone. And so and like, you play this mental game with yourself and I ended up walking around the block just because oof. it's like, well, maybe I parked it somewhere else knowing that I didn't, but you yeah. still got to go through that whole process. Yeah, dude, it was the worst. I can't even drive past that street now without feeling some kind of way. It's so much worse than a bad breakup. Where was it? Studio City or Sherman Oaks or uh... in the Shokes, dude? They got me in the Shokes. <laughs> the Shokes. They do. They that got me the in the Shokes. Shokes. <laughs> Come on, they don't do that in the Shokes. <laughs> you know, you were on a list, bro. People were like scouring the streets. Yeah, they saw your car and they're like, "Gone in." Well, here's seconds. the. You know what? That's you might be right about that because when I, I first, think so. I, I don't think it was when, a random when first, dude. When I first bought that car, you know, it was. It, I mean, it's incredible. It's a, it was a beautiful car, but you had to know. You know what I mean? Like you had to be. You had to really know what was up. So yeah. there was a time where, you know, I could drive it around. The people that would know would know. Yeah. But uh, Steve McQueen's son sold Chad? his yeah, chat. Chad McQueen sold his dad's car in an auction in Monterey okay. and it got $1.2 million. And it was a 73, no, it was a 73 911S. Oh, really? Yes. What? yes. Mine was a 72 911T okay. with S options. Oof. So, and 72? you know, uh, 72, dude. And 72s yeah. are rare because they had the, the oil on the side. Okay. Yeah look like that's oh, where yeah. the gas goes yes 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 so people would put gas where the oil went and ruin their cars so they only oh, did that one year it, and oops, mine was that wasn't a good idea no it was not a good idea but <laughs> it made it cooler yeah you know so anyway dude it's it's still my my son tells me every now and again he's like dad we gotta get you another porsche and he's like i'm gonna get you another porsche and i'm like yeah, yeah. You know, Keep he's selling he's those so ties, man, man. Yeah. <laughs> sell those uh, bow ties. Yeah. But nobody's wearing bow ties during a pandemic. Oh, shit, man. Yeah, I'll I know. A, you better have I a Porsche on layaway. Exactly. Exactly. But I like I'll pick you up in my Kentucky Porsche. We'll, we'll cruise around my Kentucky Porsche. I like that. The Trans You know what I got? The, the Trans I, You know what I got, my man. Uh, so yeah, you got some fire. I got some fire. And and same what, what you said. I've got two new... I have two new cars on the street, but I got uh, the, the TA in the garage because I don't really want my neighbors to know what no, I got. Oh, no. Dude, and we had some sketchy, dude, we had some sketchy neighbors on the corner. Right. And I was in the backyard throwing the football with my son about two years ago. And there yeah. were police helicopters everywhere. I was yeah. like, oh, shit. They're like right here. So we went in the front yard and they were at those neighbors' house. Like, oh, gun, damn. Guns drawn. They were in Dodge. Yeah, the yeah. Windows. They were yeah. in police cars. They were like in chevettes like, yeah like, right 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 yeah, right you don't even know right police these days yeah when like, you don't oh. when you when you take out the chevette that's when yeah. you mean business 
And yeah. that's why that's why the police are so afraid of defund being defunded because they're like, yes. oh, they're gonna try and take away the Chevettes. Yeah, you don't know what we got. You know yeah. what's going on in the yeah. Chevettes. Yeah, let them yeah, let them have the Chevettes. Yeah, so I don't even like I, I'll take my car out. They're gone now, but I yeah. should literally take the car out of the garage and go that way away yes. from those neighbors yes. because yes. I don't want certain neighbors to know what's in my garage. Yes. You know, same. Yeah. No, no, I get it, dude. What I used to do. Like I remember before I got the Porsche, cause that wasn't my first car, right? You know, yeah. you start with your, my first car was a Toyota Celica, right? Yeah. 71. Still fun, yeah, yeah. yeah. Nice, with a cup holder. <laughs> and how I got it, dude, I didn't have a car. <laughs> Yeah, it was a cup holder. It had the cup yeah, holder. I can let go. And then let go. Let go. Oh, I got a place for my drink. But uh, I got like I didn't have a I didn't have a car. Like I was doing comedy before I had a car, right? Yeah. And I was emceeing at the Laugh Factory, and Rosie O'Donnell came in to do a guest spot. And okay. It was at the time when she was hosting Stand Up Spotlight on VH1. Yeah. So I went on, uh, uh, you know, because I was emceeing. She saw me do like about four or five minutes in between an act. And she goes, you're funny. I want you to do the show. And I was like, cool. Right. <laughs> so next week, the, the following week, I get a call. The, the, I do a set. The set pays a thousand dollars. Right. Which is I'm, I'm, I'm winning, dude. I'm winning. I'm winning. winning. I'm winning. <laughs> I am winning. <laughs> I bought the Toyota Celica <laughs> for $900, dude, and had $100 left for gas. <laughs> you couldn't, and, and to get a drink to use the cup holder. What? <laughs> dude, you couldn't tell me I wasn't winning. <laughs> Money left over. What? $100? And a car? You got a C note? Thank you, Rosie O'Donnell. <laughs> wow. You know how like back in the day too, like I was just used to doing club spots, but that was a TV spot. So like, I got I get paid. I get paid, right? So $1, I had to put on for this exposure. For for this. Really? You, you're gonna put me on TV with my yeah. jokes and give me a thousand dollars. Come on. So so you know, so like uh it was a big deal, dude. So I remember I went to the mall. And I got a sport jacket, right? Ooh, nice. <laughs> I got this. You had a left over. Uh, I got no, 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 <laughs> dude. No, that was investment to get the money when I did the spot. Oh, that was buy-in oh, money for the spot. For the spot. Yes, yeah. I was All like, right. oh, I'll, I'll spend eighty-three dollars yeah. on a sport coat. <laughs> 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 so I got this canary yellow sport coat that was linen, right? Yeah. And I wore it on the show and it was a little too big, right? Like I look like one of those uh, old NBA coaches. You know? <laughs> little shoulder pads up there. Yeah, head. exactly. Like, yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, I remember Rosie said to me, she said, um, let me give you a little tip. The jacket looks great, by the way, but linen wrinkles on TV. And I was like, damn. I'm gonna have to return this to the mall tomorrow <laughs> and get my eighty-three dollars back. And that's why my price tag is still in the jacket. Yeah. <laughs> They're like, wait, two weeks later they see it on TV. Like, right, right. Hey, he brought, he brought hey, that jacket back. Hey, that NBA coach is doing comedy. <laughs> Man, he's really talented. He got so many jobs. I bet he grabs a silicon with a cup holder. Right, right. <laughs> <Yeah>. He balling. <laughs> he's balling. Dude, he I love that, that car. On me. Dude, I, I drove that car into the ground. I remember one day I was going to an audition and my muffler fell off in the middle of rush hour traffic, right? And this is how little I knew about cars. Yeah. I was like, ooh, I'm gonna miss my audition. Here's what I'll do. I'll let the muffler cool down and then I'll just put it back up under the engine. <laughs> it goes in there somewhere. Yeah, just... right. It just, oh, it'll just naturally stick. Let me just, it's like, I, like my knowledge of cars was like they were Lego pieces. Yeah. <laughs> It's not, it's yeah, not right. Cool. I'll hear the snap. I'll hear the snap. Right, right. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm letting it cool down because right, I'm right. Car. So I don't burn I'm my fingers. Cars. Yeah, I don't yeah. know my and mufflers are heavy. So yeah, let no, it cool down, let it cool down first. 
Yes. And, and I forgot to I forgot to have oven mitts in the car because <laughs> you put on an oven mitt, which makes it easier to Ooh. refasten the muffler. Of course. <laughs> That's when you take off the yellow canary jacket and hold the muffler. Yep. Up. Yep. <laughs> was that was that after Friday night videos or before? That was that was before. Yeah, that was one of the first. That was just one of those gigs where, dude, I was the right place at the right time, emceeing, and you know, Rosie O'Donnell just happened to come in to do a guest spot. Like That's it great. was like it was great, dude. Like those were just those. I love those early days of comedy because it was just like grinding it. You know what I mean? Like you didn't just, know who was gonna pop in. You didn't know. You like, never knew, dude. You, you, never, you knew. never knew. Like you just had to just, you know, you were just doing your thing. Just have fun. Yes, you know, and you, yes, yes. And and yeah. that's one thing that when I first, you know, knew who you were from Friday Night Videos, you would just come out and be smiling and light yeah. up the room. And I'm like, yeah, I don't know that dude, but he's got, he's got the right plan. You hit the stage. <laughs> he's happy, man. So everyone yeah. else is happy. Yeah. And I don't know if you know this, but Judy, my producer in Canada right now, uh -huh. was, my, was my DJ at the Laugh Factory on Thursday nights. Yes. Okay. All right. So that's DJ she Sketch. She, oh, okay. Well, tick a tick a tip. <laughs> Jamie goes, buddy, you don't need DJ, buddy. Listen no, man, me. come on. You just do comedy. You do rock and roll comedy, man. You don't know, buddy. I go, no, come on, you don't it. need DJ. Yeah, yeah. I'm like, no, I kind of like it's fun to have a DJ. Yes, so yes. He's like, buddy, you don't to need add it. that energy. Yeah, I like the energy of the room. And and uh, I think I paid her out of my own pocket because Jamie is like, you don't need it. And I'm like, can I, can I just have her? Yeah. If I pay her and, yeah. and let me just show you the yeah. kind of interview I want, man. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. You paid her out of your your yellow jacket fund. Yes. I'm like, <laughs> Jamie, I'm paying her more than you're paying me. Right. Right. It's worth it. It's worth right. it. Right. Right. It's all good. Uh, yeah. So, buddy, today I, I started watching the Zen Diaries a little bit, your buddy Gary Shannon. Oh, you did? Oh, great, man. Yeah. And yeah. you know what? I started watching it. And I got, I'm like kind of superstitious about watching comedy before I do comedy or do the show. I'm like, yeah. like I, I don't want to be sad, you know, a little bit. Yes, yes, sure, sure. Because sure. he was yeah, such. You want to keep it, yeah. What, what, that's actually a good thing to watch though before you're about to do comedy because Gary was such a technician. Yeah. And he was all about doing the pre work before yep. going to do what you were about to do. So. Yeah. Uh, I, I mean, I, I, the, the first time I watched it, dude, it floored me. It, floored, yeah. it really is a fantastic documentary. And it was like, I was friends with Gary for 18 years, right? I know, yeah, you guys are tight. You played yeah, I met him. Tightly, uh, his basketball. I was in, his, I was in his, his, his Sunday basketball game, yeah. which was, uh, it was like Fight Club, but with better jokes. <laughs> uh, it was invite only. Uh, yeah. Luckily, I got invited um, and 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 passed enough the first time I was there to get invited back. Pass to Gary. Pass to Gary. Yes. <laughs> yes. Exactly. Yeah, keep shooting, Gary. Keep shooting. Uh, <laughs> Gary's open, but you didn't pass to him. He's like, Yeah. No. No. Gary. Much. Gary could shoot though. Gary would surprise you. Sure. Gary. Right. Yeah. He had a nice little jump shot. So uh, it, it was, was great. With the jump shot. Exactly. Shot. Exactly. So. It, it was great, man. Like that Sunday run, it was all these super cool people that I'm still very close to now. Sarah Silverman, David Duchovny, um, Kevin Nealon, uh, yeah. Ben Schwartz, um, yeah, uh, Breck and Meyer, like just a, a great bunch of dudes uh, and, and Sarah. Um, and, and it was amazing, dude. It was a great thing to have. The one rule that Gary had about the game was um you couldn't talk about the game so you know like, we would really it, it was really like fight club dude like it really was this get together we would play ball and then afterwards we would go you know have pizza upstairs and if there was you were posting on, on facebook oh no, dude no it was like it really was like this super dope secret society and um yeah like you know some of my closest friends became friends because we played in that game together yeah so yeah it was it was pretty kevin? great i saw you were just hiking with kevin and Helen yeah, yeah 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 i met kevin in the game and uh and and kevin was hilarious dude like it was so funny like i played in games before that you know you got to bring your skills this was one of the the coolest games because 
you had to bring your basketball skills, but you also had to bring your comedy skills. So yeah. that was a whole nother like <laughs> psychological aspect. Yeah, yeah. It, you know what I mean? You're like, do like, I, I talk remember? too much smack? Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, smack. you gotta find the right level yeah, of smack yeah. to talk. And it was it was funny, like uh, you know, I remember Sarah would clown me in a really funny way, like I would make a cool shot or something, and she'd go. Nice, Suli. Great. Great. No smile. I love how you didn't smile at all. <laughs> like you have your game face. I was like, whoa, yeah. I've never been shit talked like this before. <laughs> this Sarah is different. Play? Yeah, Sarah Sarah's play? got a nice little game too. Really? Oh, keep on Sarah Silverman. She can hoop. Really? Sarah okay. got some game. Yes. Yes. It's yeah. funny because I, I look physically fit. Like I, I love fitness. Yes. But I grew up like a little BMX punk, you know, like a uh -huh, punk. Uh -huh. So I don't really have ball skill balling you know yeah oh, yeah my son, we yeah. have an eight foot hoop i can uh -huh. like, damn yes me now. yes he's like, ah, God, in his face but he's yeah he's 12 and he's like you know bumping me a little bit he's got yeah he's going through his legs i'm like yeah you know, this, yeah I, don't even, I got some comedy stuff i need to be yeah exactly jokes. yeah i gotta write some jokes i got you grounded do, man. you are grounded <laughs> <laughs> who do you think turns these lights on man <laughs> jokes keep the lights on right it's time to be out here <laughs> right my uh my son plays uh he's a sophomore in high school now uh -huh. and last year before covid he played on the high school team and it's and it's interesting before the pandemic started i was taking him to play with me in in, in this other run that i was playing in and we're the uh -huh. same size so we guard each other and okay. it, it's great dude it's like this is what i've been waiting for my whole life but uh -huh. my son is getting really good. Like he yeah. doesn't have a job, so You're like how can I get better? Yes, at this yes, can yes. I still improve my yes. Skills? And let me tell you something. The last thing you want is your son, your size, wearing your gear, cooking yeah. you on the court. Yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> like you don't you don't want a fifteen year old because like they're so cool about it. They're super nonchalant. Like yeah. he'll be humming Drake lyrics while he's cooking me on the court. Like <laughs> yeah. so that ain't cool. That ain't yeah. nothing you want. Come on, yeah, I don't, I don't need all that. Yeah, come on, dude. You're doing too much. My son, my son is 12, and he's a big uh -huh. dude, but I still yeah. carry him to bed. Oh, nice, nice. Yeah, I still carry him like, yeah, I got, nice. I still got, I still got you. So yeah, don't forget, yeah, who yeah. Can still carry you to bed. Yeah. <laughs> I, uh, my son told me he said. Uh, he said, "Dad, I'm going to be better than you in two years." And now we're into that second year. Yeah. So clock is ticking dude it is ticking like we'll shoot around a little bit and i'm a good outside shooter okay but i can tell he's getting better like you know he got that young energy yeah you got so, you got stuck getting busy with comedy or just kind of i know i know i know look for another car with a cup holder yes gotta yes another. i gotta have another <laughs> little outlet <laughs> Do your thing. I gotta have another outlet. Yeah. Yeah. Come on. Dad can't be playing ball. All yeah. Of <laughs> he, uh, it was funny. The, uh, he took me to go like his friends play a little bit together. Right. And it's just, you know, the young kids with that young yeah. energy. And he was like, Hey dad, you want to come with me and play? And I thought he was inviting me to go play, but he was just inviting me to drive him there and watch. Yeah. yeah so yeah, I was like, yeah, I was like, it was like he was Batman and I was Alfred, dude. <laughs> Good shot, I, Mr. Wayne. Good shot. I've got you here safely, Mr. Wayne. Yes. Would have been anything else you need, Mr. Right. Wayne. Right. I'll be I'll be over at the car, Mr. Wayne, and have a have a, have a spiffy game. <laughs> Let me know if you need anything more. Right. Right. How are the laces? Right. Uh, I recommend these Jordans, Mr. Wayne. Yeah. <laughs> you got a collection of Jordans. I know you got a shoe collection too yeah and he's um he's, he's got funny. He's, well he's a size nine i'm a size nine and a half Oops. so he is just frothing at the mouth he's like, he's like i'm about to get the golden ticket yeah <laughs> uh, every now and again what i'll do is i'll 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 bless him with a good little pair like Break i gave him, him off a pair. yes yes so but he's he knows he knows i got the stash and he's he's ready to be all in it so it's the time. It's that time, dude. I'm, I'm, I'm. I've gone from Batman to Alfred. Yeah, you have. Yeah, yeah. He's not even Robin I, anymore. Yeah, <laughs> I used to wear the cape. I used to have the Batmobile. Yeah, yeah. And they got me in the shokes. <laughs> <laughs> you had the cup holders, man. Exactly. <laughs> now you're I'm holding OP. his cup. 
Man, oh, G cup it. holder. <laughs> <laughs> I showed my kids today. Actually, I really I showed them a crazy leg. So you, do you have? Oh, a dream? you did. Yeah. I oh, got you did. I got. Oh, dream. that's awesome. That is you know, awesome. You know, back at the lab pack, that friend from England visiting, and they're like, you know, uh -huh. crazy legs. You remember it's, that, dude? It is. It's. It's insane how much love Crazy Legs gets. Like it is. Like I'm surprised I don't. There's have... like t-shirts and stuff, right? Oh, is there t-shirts? Wait a minute. Is Everybody, there? Is there t-shirts? Is there t-shirts? Check this out, y'all. What? So if you that is seen, a. That don't is be a. a menace to to South Friday. Central while South drinking Central. your juice in the hood. That's right. And I so played Crazy was, Legs. And went on to be an the, iconic. Yes, the character. best dancer in the hood who was in a wheelchair. <laughs> yeah, I got a dream. <laughs> That's me. <laughs> Crazy legs, y'all. No, 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 no. <laughs> no, no. Did you, you know what I still get, dude? Of the, did you see the video posted of the, the, I forgot where he is. He's somewhere in Northern California. He's a, He's like a lineman coach, but he was yes. a hammer backup dancer. Yes, 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 and he yes. Was really great. Yes. He's like a 320. Yes. He's like, no, 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 no. And he can break it down. Yes. Yes. I thought dude, of you when I saw that. I, like, I got to post this. Yeah. Dude, it's, it's, uh, it's cra crazy. Crazy Lakes gets a lot of love. Like a lot of love. My, my daughter went to school in Atlanta, went to Spelman. Uh -huh. So, uh, you know, I would go down there and do these dad visits, right? And I would be in total dad mode. Like I wouldn't yeah. be thinking about nothing. I'm just like, oh, cool. I get to spend the weekend with my daughter but I forget I'm going down to the ATL and I'm crazy legs. So I'll be walking around and people will be like, oh, damn dog, there go crazy legs right there. <laughs> <laughs> there, go, there go crazy legs. ATL got love for crazy legs. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> ATL's got big love for crazy legs. I love the ATL. I used to DJ at a club 131 downtown back in the day. Okay. And that was I was the only white dude for a 10 mile radius. Yes, mile. yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, so, sir. You know, ATL, yeah. I got love for the ATL, man, because they yeah, didn't kill ATL. me. Yeah, that's a good place. They let a crazy white boy with a mullet come in and put down some key sweat, and they didn't yeah. kill me. So. Yeah, because you put down that key sweat. <laughs> yeah. They were like, he knows what's up. <laughs> I want to. I want to. Yeah. Right. Yeah. <laughs> right. I did a little key sweat move. He's, like, he's like I was kind of doing the Smurf. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Too hey. much. Just, hey. just enough. You know, just enough. Yeah. <laughs> All right. He's cool. Hey, man, I like those old school, um, the, the seven up posters behind you. Yeah, man. That's uh, that's that old school. I got that little, you know, I like my, my, uh, my little dining room, Mary, has got that 50s diner vibe to it. And I said, I'm going to take it all the way back. That, um, that seven up signs from 1957. Oh, wow, man. I yeah. did that. I yeah. Like it. It's like got it. that. It's got that vibe. I like, are you sure? Are you still in Sherman Oaks? I am in the Shokes. I am all in right, the Shokes. The Shokes. All yeah. right. I'll see you every once in a while. All right. Yeah. I'm going to pick you up in the TA one day, man. Let's do that. Okay. Yeah. Let's do, I'm down, dude. I'm down. All right. I'm let's with do it. that, buddy. I'm with it. All right. Suley McCullough, one of my favorite people in the comedy biz, y'all. Check him out. What do you got coming up, man? Let him know. Uh, dude, I, uh, I was touring before this, me and Sean Wayans were touring the country, ripping it up. And then this pandemic stopped all that. Uh, I am, uh, currently producing Anthony Anderson's show, uh, to tell the truth. I'm a consulting producer on that. Uh, I've been writing a bunch, dude, writing a, a, a series right now, which is good. Uh, setting up some shows. So, uh, crazy legs is going to be there. I'm crazy legs. The mix. <laughs> <laughs> this pandemic ain't stopping nobody. <laughs> can't stop that. Oh, no, no, no. No, you can't stop it. <laughs> no, 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 no. All right. It's one of the funniest man in the comedy business, Mr. Suley McCullough. You told me you'd have a beer tonight. Hey, I got a beer. There you go. There you go little, little Shimei right there. All Who's right, my man. man. Thank you so much for stopping by. Absolutely. By the Absolutely. Right, good to see you, man. Suley McCullough, everybody. All right, everybody, come on, get happy. Check us out. We, uh, we premiere, this is still a premiere, if we uh, air every Wednesday night, 6 p.m. Pacific time on YouTube and on Facebook on uh, Stevie D and his so-called friends. Uh, I'd like to thank my guests, uh, Lana Turner and my man, Suli McCullough. Check them all out. Follow them. 
funny, funny shit right there, funny people. And I'd like to give uh, props to my the partner in crime up in Canada, Miss Miss J- Judy Sketch Lewinson. She is the brains behind all of this. Trust me, trust me. And she's gonna take us out with something funky, right, Sketch? Oh, you better believe it. All right, all right. <laughs> Thanks for watching, y'all. Let me take you back in time, time, time. You're in the mix with Judy Lou.